So today's chapter is going to be in your administrative dental assistant textbook. Um, this is the fifth edition. This is the smaller paperback uh, textbook by Evolve. So in chapter one, which starts on page, give me a second, page two, um, we're going to go over a few different learning objectives that we'll go over now. So the first thing we're going to do is describe an effective dental health care team and what that looks like. We'll list the knowledge and skills that are expected of the administrative dental assistant. We'll list the personal traits and educational background of the administrative dental assistant. We'll name various members of the dental health care team and discuss the roles they play in the delivery of dental care. We'll explain the rules and function of the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996, also known as HIPAA, including the administrative simplification as it applies to the dental health care system. We'll describe the role of the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, otherwise known as OSHA, and the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, or the CDC, in dentistry. We'll identify the five sections of the American Dental Association's principles of ethics and code of professional conduct and demonstrate an understanding of its content by explaining, discussing, and applying the principles. We'll explain the legal standards of dentistry, including, including licensure, registration, and certification. We'll explain the rights of dental patients. We'll describe the roles of the American Dental Associate Assistant Association, or the ADAA, and the HOSA, or Future Health Professionals. So the, an effective dental health care team consists of the dentist um, or is dentistry, which, uh, which is care that improves and maintains dental health. The dental health care team are a group of professionals who work together to provide dental care. This includes dentists and dental auxiliaries. Members of the dental health care team include the dentist, and this can be a general dentist that only does general dentistry. And the thing about general dentistry is they can actually, they have the ability to do um, multiple things. So not just fillings and, and crowns, they can do root canals, they can do um, simple extractions um, um, and other things that would normally require a specialist. There are also specialty dentists that, that only deal in the specialty they're involved in. For example, there would be an oral surgeon that only deals with uh, removing teeth, and uh, they can also um, um, evaluate lesions or, or do biopsies for, uh, for lesions that occur in the mouth. Um, orthodontists only deal with braces. Pediatric dentists only deal with children. Endodontists only deal with root canals and so on. The dental hygienist is the one that cleans the teeth and provides uh, prophylaxis, sometimes uh, deep cleanings, otherwise known as scaling and root planing. The dental assistant can consist of a chairside assistant, uh, which is somebody that uh, helps a dentist during patient treatment in areas like maintaining a clean and clear operating field, passing instruments, and manipulating dental materials. An expanded functions dentist, uh, dental assistant, um, is somebody that can perform an expanded functions. Um, and these are all outlined in the Dental Practice Act. Sometimes they can be placing fillings by themselves. Sometimes it can mean um, um, taking permanent, uh, per taking impressions for permanent restorations or seating permanent restorations. Um, and then a circulating or roving dental assistant is somebody that can um, do both back office and front office uh, functions. The role of the dental or the role of the administrative dental assistant usually has business duties like computer work. So these can be um, having knowledge of dental software programs, insurance claims processing, web page development, and email and internet functions. The office equipment and operations that they would take that they would work with are fax machines, credit card mach machines, um, copy machines, things like that. They also take care of bookkeeping, payroll, and banking. The technical duties of the administrative dental assistant include appointment scheduling, procedure coding, and sometimes chairside assisting when the office gets busy enough to where the regular chairside assistants um, uh, need a little help in the back. The required skills would be patient and staff relations. Um, they want uh, the administrative assistant should be somebody that um, 
uh, has superior communication skills because um, they need to be able to communicate um, business operations, both with the patients um, as well as um, operations managers. Um, and they need to be able to be flexible enough to take that um, same skill over to the back office and do chair side assisting if necessary. The types of administrative assistants include an office manager, a business manager, they can be a receptionist or an insurance biller, um, a records manager, a data processor, a bookkeeper, or an appointment scheduler. So what the office manager does is they oversee the entire office and it's common in a small and large office and the responsibilities that they have include formulating and carrying out office policies, scheduling and managing staff, uh, resolving conflicts between the staff or maybe even sometimes between the staff and patients. Um, they hire, they're responsible for hiring and terminating personnel, organizing and conducting staff development and serving a, as a liaison between the dentist and the staff. A business manager is more common in larger practices and their responsibilities include managing fiscal operations, uh, creating and interpreting reports, developing marketing campaigns, negotiating contracts with managed care providers, coordinating and overseeing insurance, managed care and government programs. So there are many, many different ideas for promoting a dental office from key fobs and pens or other giveaway items to public speaking to sponsoring sports teams and athletic events. And a business manager would be responsible for coordinating all of these things. The receptionist plays a vital role in the office. And this is because they are the person that usually makes the first impression in the office. And this can start with a phone call um, that the patient would make to the office or if a patient walks into the office and wants to make a, an appointment, the receptionist is the first person that they see. Their responsibilities include projecting a positive attitude, greeting patients, collecting patient data, answering telephones, scheduling and confirming appointments, serving as a liaison between the dentist and the patient, and making financial arrangements. An insurance biller, or sometimes called a coder, is someone that oversees all insurance-related matters. Their responsibilities include collecting insurance information and verifying eligibility, determining benefits, communicating with patients regarding benefits, completing and sending insurance forms, processing pre-authorization forms, tracking insurance claims, and collecting co-payments from patients. A pre-authorization form is submitted to an insurance company before treatment is performed to determine whether the proposed treatment is a benefit according to the insurance plan and what financial level it will be covered by insurance. A wreckage manager ensures all patients' files are complete and their responsibilities include, include collecting patient histories and updating records, reviewing records for completeness, accuracy, and compliance with regulations, protecting the security of, this, of the dental records to ensure that confidentiality is maintained and keeping records safe from destruction and loss. So there's usually also an offsite backup and storage information um, or some type of storage technology to make sure that all these records are kept in place and are safe, especially since most offices are digital or paperless. A data processor is somebody that transfers data from patient's files into a computer. Um, this was uh, really common when offices first started going paperless and they had actual paper charts that needed to go into the computer. Um, it's not as common now just because most of office has most offices have already implemented um, paperless programs. They use iPads and things like that to gather um, patients' medical histories. And oftentimes um, patient's information is, is um, inputted directly into the computer. So there is no more uh, paper charts. But if there still were, their responsibilities would include generating accounting reports, processing or tracking dental insurance claims, transmitting dental insurance claims electronically, recording chair-side dental treatment, managing patient records, um, generating letters or referrals to specialists, producing newsletters, maintaining a recall system, and sending or receiving electronic communications. A bookkeeper is somebody that tracks all incoming and outgoing money. Their responsibilities include maintaining accounts receivable or accounts payable, um, 
writing checks, depositing money, managing accurate and truthful records, paying employees their salaries, filing tax and payroll reports, and depositing tax money according to the IRS and state regulations. So uh, an example of an accounts payable would be accounts uh, like accounts payable, which includes uh, payroll, taxes, and unpaid bills. Accounts receivable would be uh, money that the dental practice um, uh, receives or money that is owed to the dental practice. An appointment scheduler maximizes productivity by scheduling appointments appropriately. Their responsibilities include organizing and maintaining the daily patient schedule, assigning patients to appropriate times, scheduling patients in a timely manner, maximizing daily schedules so that the personnel can work smarter, not harder. They balance the schedule, they track dental treatments, and they maintain a recall system. Efficient scheduling minimizes the patient's stress resulting in a positive dental experience. Traits of a, an administrative dental assistant is somebody that shows flexibility, has many varied skills, is attuned to diversity and patient relations, demonstrates a strong worth ethic, exercises ethical awareness, communicates well in written and verbal media. They operate tactfully, can work uh, productively as a team. They take initiative, they prioritize duties, and they make decision and work, and they can work autonomously, which means they can work without somebody always telling them what to do. So the education um, of an administrative assistant um, means that the applicant should acquire dental assisting and business skills through a training program. There is no licensure available for the duties of an administrative dental assistant. The Dental Practice Act outlines the duties that can be performed by dental auxiliaries. So those assistants are required to take dental radiographs, perform direct patient care, or engage in infection control procedures, must consult their state Dental Practice Act to make sure that they are doing things legally. The dentist, or the requirements to being a dentist, is somebody that completes four years of undergrad, undergraduate study and three to four years of postgraduate or dental school. They must, they must pass written and practical exams, and the degree that they would get uh, from such a program would be either a DDS, or Doctor of Dental Surgery, or a DMD. Their role is to be head of the dental health care team. They can specialize in dental public health, endodontics, oral and maxillofacial pathology, oral and maxillofacial radiology or surgery, orthodontics and dental facial orthopedics, pediatric dentistry, periodontics, or prosthodontics. To be a hygienist, you must complete a two to four year post high school program and pass written and practical exams. Their roles are to provide oral hygiene instructions and oral prophylaxis. They instruct and motivate patients in preventative dentistry. They complete other duties as assigned, such as administering local anesthesia. They can also apply pit and fissure sealants. And there are expanded duties. Um, they can perform expanded duties as required. So these um, include um, doing things like root planing, scaling and polishing, uh, processing and evaluating radiographs and performing all duties uh, assigned to a dental assistant. The, la the dental laboratory technologist is somebody responsible for construction of uh, full and partial dentures, crowns, bridges, and orthodontic appliances. They typically work in laboratories that serve many dental practices. Larger dental practices may employ their own technicians so that work doesn't have to be sent out to a third party. So they usually direct, they work directly with the dentist by allowing detailed written instructions, uh, or excuse me, by following detailed written instructions and using impressions taking, taken on of a patient's teeth and soft tissues. A chair side dental assistant is someone that helps the dentist during the patient treatment, like passing instruments and keeping the, the operating field dry and clear. They perform intraoral duties assigned under the dentist direct or indirect supervision and they perform adjunct duties. An expanded or extended function dental assistant completes duties as outlined by the, dentals, by the Dental Practice Act. 
Um, they receive licensure or certification if required by the state. A circulating or roving dental assistant performs very duty, very duties like um, assisting dentists, they can assist hygienists um, or other assistants, and they can take dental radiographs. The Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996, otherwise known as HIPAA, has two major topics. One is portability and the other is accountability. They institute administrative simplification that eases healthcare through electronic trans transactions and code sets, the privacy rule, the security rule, and the national provider identification standard. Administrative simplification is designed to make business of healthcare easier through the development of standards for transaction code sets, privacy of patient information, security of patient information, and the national provider identifiers. The following transaction code sets include dental codes, which are CDT, diagnosis codes, which are ICD 10 CM, procedure codes, which are known as CPT4, physician serving codes, which are known, also known as CPT4, inpatient service codes, which are known as ICD CM, other service, no, other service codes such as HCPCS, and drug codes, which are NDC. The electronic, the electronic data interchange or EDI um, was, was meant to move away from paper claims required, um, which also required the standardization of electronic data sets. These data sets are transparent in the work that administrative dental assistants do. HIPAA also states that all codes used to report treatment must be standardized. So the national standards for code used to report Dental treatment is the code of dental procedures and nomenclature. <clears throat> the standard for privacy of individual identif identifiable health information or the privacy rule um, was created to protect patient information. And this applies to health plans, healthcare clearinghouses, healthcare providers transmitting data electronically. And this gives patients the right to access their medical records um, it also uh, gives them notice of privacy practices, as well as limiting the limits on use of, of personal medical information. Um, it prohibits, there's a prohib prohibition on marketing, um, confidential communication, and means of filing formal complaints. So the security rule requires that covered providers protect the integrity, confidentiality, and availability of electronic health information. There are three standards, which include the administrative, the physical, and the technical. And to comply, providers must perform risk analysis and establish risk protocols. They must develop sanctioned policies and continuously revive protocols to ensure compliance. So the difference between the security rule and the privacy rule is that the security rule addresses only PHI, which is uh, protected health information that is shared electronically, where the privacy rule covers PHI provided in oral, written, and electronic forms. The National Provider Identifier Standard, or the MPI, is a distinctive standard ID number which is issued to patients by the US government. It was mandated to appear on all electronic transactions by May 23rd, 2007. It was given to all individual health care providers like group practices, clinics, and hospitals. And it replaces a social security number, which is uh, it not only replaces the social security number, but also the individual tax ID number, numbers and other identifiers. So the reason they created this was to reduce the possibility of identity theft so that patients uh, social security numbers weren't flying around into um, different databases which all have the um, uh, possibility of being hacked. <clears throat> the high tech act uh, was part of the American recovery and reinvestment act of 2009. And what it does is it widens the scope of privacy and security protections available under HIPAA increases the potential legal liability for non-compliance and provides for more enforcement. So the highlight of the High Tech Act are um, that individuals have the right to obtain FI in electronic format, such as e-FI. 
patients can sign a third party. They can assign a third party, such as the recipient of EFI. Uh, business associates are directly responsible for privacy and security of FI. New requirements for marketing communications were made and new reports for security breaches and the possibility of civil and criminal penalties were enforced. The 2013 HIPAA omnibus final rule was enacted to strengthen the privacy and security rules for health, inf health information established under HIPAA. This greatly enhances a patient's pri privacy protections. It expands patients' rights. And when patients pay out of pocket in full, it allows patients to instruct their provider to refrain from sharing information about their information um, about their treatment with their health plan. So the HIPAA omnibus final rule rule also requires that the notice of privacy practices forms inform patients that they will be notified if their FI is subject to breach. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, is a government agency within the U.S. Department of Labor. They uh, operate under a professional ethics, which must be observed in the daily operation of a dental practice. Ethics deals with moral judgments as determined by a professional organization. So some of these examples include um, qualities of honesty, compassion, kindness, integrity, fairness, and charity, which are all part of the electronic, excuse me, which are all part of the ethical education of a dentist and practice of dentistry and help define the true profession. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or the CDC, is a government agency under the jurisdiction of the Health and Human Services. It was developed, uh, it has developed guidelines for infection control in the dental health care setting. They make recommendations for preventing and controlling infectious diseases and managing health, uh, personnel health and safety in a dental setting. So these guidelines are very specific and a complete list can be found on the CDC website as well as the ADA website. Professional ethics um, include both laws and include that both laws and ethics must be observed in the daily operation of the dental practice. Ethics deals with more with moral judgment as determined by a professional organization. And according to the ADA, self-government is a privilege and an obligation. So the American Dental Association, those American Dental Association principles of ethics and code of professional conducts have several, section, several sections. Um, section one is the principle, which is patient autonomy or self-government. So the dentist has a duty to respect the patient's rights to self-determination and confidentiality. Section two talks about uh, also the principle, which, is, uh, which includes non-maleficence, which means do no harm. So the dentist has a duty to refrain from harming the patient. Section three is benef beneficence, do good. So the dentist has a duty to promote the patient's welfare. Section four is justice or fairness. The dentist has a duty to treat people fairly. And section five, section five is veracity or truthfulness. With this, the dentist has a duty to communicate truthfully. The legal standards in the dental practice are set for each state by the Dental Practice Act. Licensure ad identifies those who meet minimum requirements and are qualified to practice. Registration is a form of licensure designed to protect the public. And certification is a condition of licensure in some states. And this is granted by the Dental Assisting National Board, or DANB. Patients' rights um, deal with patients wanting and demanding to be treated in a professional man manner. The California Dental Association has published a patient's bill of rights and examples of the rights include the right to schedule an appointment with your dentist in a timely manner, the right to see the dentist every time you receive dental treatment, so not just seeing the hygienist or not just seeing the dental assistant, the right to ask your dentist to explain all treatment options regardless of coverage or cost. Remember that dental auxiliaries cannot diagnose and treat patients. The American Dental Association Assistance Association has functions that include promoting professional growth, facilitating community involvement, and educating dental assistants. 
The benefits that they provide are professional liability insurance, accidental death insurance, discounts on home study courses, and, description, and a subscription to the Dental Assistance Journal. Um, there are also some scholarship opportunities um, with this association. OSA, which is Future Health Professionals, um, is a student organization that is sponsored by the U.S. Department of Education and 48 departments of education and 48 state departments of education. Their mission is to promote <clears throat> career opportunities in healthcare and to enhance the delivery of quality healthcare to all people. <clears throat> they annually award thousands of dollars in scholarships to members. All right, this is all I have for chapter one. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thank you for listening.